It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. Hello, this is Dr. Justin Coulson. Welcome to the Happy Families Podcast. I love Wednesdays because of the fascinating conversations that we get to have with people all over the place doing a whole lot of really important and amazing work. When you went to school, do you remember Healthy Harold? Do you remember the giraffe used to show up in the playground or in the school assembly hall and you do these life education sessions about all different things, healthy living, making good choices, all that kind of stuff. Well, today, having a chat with Therese Hooper. She's the Director of Education in New South Wales at Life Education. Therese is a former teacher and a parent of three kids, all of whom have gone through the high school transition. And that's relevant for the conversation today because, well, there's um, a lot going on as kids transition to high school. And Life Ed has released a new study showing that Kids are genuinely anxious and stressed about the transition from primary school to secondary school. 46% of kids say that they feel fear, uncertainty, and sadness about the move. 43% of kids said they felt joy or contentment. So there's a lot of kids that aren't feeling great about it. This echoes research that I came across a few years ago that shows that when it comes to resilience and well-being, there is a dip, a measurable dip in both resilience and well-being as kids make this transition from primary school to high school. There's another dip again around year 10. Not sure why, although I've got a couple of ideas about that. But today, we're going to talk about this specific study with Therese. The study is Australia's largest of its kind. It showed that girls are more likely to feel fear or sadness compared to boys. And overall, students are pretty well underprepared for the transition, going from big fish in little ponds to little fish in in big ponds. The research has led to the development of a new life education program called Guide to Thrive, which is available online for teachers and for parents. Therese Hooper, Director of Education at Life Ed Australia, joins us now to unpack it all. Thank you so much for being on the Happy Families podcast, Therese. Thanks for having me, Justin. I'm happy to be here. It was a long intro, but there's so much to unpack here. So let's just dive straight in and get cracking. The transition to high school, Therese, it is for a lot of kids scary and nervous. Not not all kids, but for a, for a large percentage of them. Mm-hmm. When you look at the research that you've come across, consider your own life experience and the work that you do with life education, how important would you say this transition is to the rest of the child's life? Oh, it's really very important. I mean, half of these kids are telling us that they're, they're really concerned about this transition into secondary school and a negative experience transitioning from that little little pond into that big pond um, can lead to, you know, poorer academic outcomes, um, less friends, so less social connections, lower sense of well-being and a higher likelihood of them disengaging from school or dropping out earlier. So when you say that, Therese, uh I'm, I'm interested to know, are we talking about kids moving into high school, even in a school that is from like kindergarten right through or reception right through? Are we seeing this across the board? Yeah, we are because I think, you know, we've all sort of tried this on our kids, telling them these scary stories is like you're not going to get away with that in secondary school or wait until you see the workload increasing. I mean, we do tend to use this as a, you know, it's all going to change moment. And, you know, that, that you know, we've got to think of the ramifications of those kind of statements. Half the kids are still excited about it, but half the kids that, you know, it heightens their sense of anxiety around the change. And when you're feeling anxious, when you're feeling scared, when you're feeling fearful, uh, the playground is a sort of place where other kids will notice that. They'll feed off that and they'll give you more of what you expect, right? I mean, that's that's the way the social contagion, the, the way kids work. Absolutely, absolutely. Like, you know, confident kids that are using the right kind of body language and just really exuding that confidence, they're going to be better placed. But the kids that are feeling nervous anyway, it, you know, they're right for the picking and it does lead to more challenges, even even things like, you know, greater um, prevalence around bullying. This is really important that we listen to what these kids are telling us right now. Let's have a look at the flip side. We know that nearly half of the kids in the survey said that this is not a, not a positive transition time for them. It's a, it's a fearful time. What happens when we get the transition right? Do we just literally flip it around and say everything goes great? Well, no, but the, the likelihood of them uh, achieving academic achievements or higher levels of academic achievements um, is more prevalent. Um, they're better engaged in the school system. They might be participating in more extracurricular activities. They're going to have stronger friendship connections so that if something does go wrong, they've got other people to turn to. They're going to feel safe in that environment and embedded in that school community because each school is its own little community. 
I mean, I'm thinking this conversation is so important to have right now. Uh, it's it's August. We've still got several months until our year sixes head into year seven. And right around the country now, everyone goes from grade six to grade seven, from primary school to high school. Uh, and, and I wonder what parents can do to help their kids to be better prepared. I, I presume that the survey data, the, the kids are identifying that this is a, a, a tricky time for them. What are they saying? Well, I'm going to stop you there because that's part of the problem is we start talking about this. We go, oh, it's August. It'll be happening soon. We need to get way in front of this. We need to be having this conversation, you know, maybe a year earlier. Mm. And the kids are telling us that. They're saying we don't want all this information at the last minute and we don't want it to stop the minute we arrive or a week after we've arrived at secondary school either. We want that support and all that structure to, to look after us over a longer period of time. So, you know, again, this is a really great opportunity to take it from the mouths of babes they're telling us what they need it would be crazy not to listen okay so if your kids are in grade six right now sorry too too bad so sad but if they're in grade five right now <laughs> i shouldn't say that i'm just kidding uh, now, there's something else in this data though that i read uh and, and highlighted in the intro therese that i really want to pick up on again 46 percent of kids said they feel fear uncertainty and sadness about the move uh girls were the ones that were most likely to experience fear or sadness rather than boys. Now, I've got a couple of ideas around what could be going on here, but I'd love to know what you think before I throw my two cents worth. Well, I, I was hoping to hear your ideas because we at LifeEd, we need to conduct more research to understand this um, to, and to unpack it further. I know personally, my experience, I've got two daughters um, and I found that this was around the age that they started to disengage from sport. They had um, more friendship challenges. So, Justin, I'm really keen to hear your thoughts on this matter also. Sure. Well, I, you, you're, you're exactly right. The data shows that kids disengage from those extracurricular activities, especially ones that involve moving their physical body. Girls don't play sport once they get into high school. Grade seven, grade eight, the drop-off is precipitous. And, and a lot of this has to do with body image and a lot of that has to do with what's happening in the playground. It has to do with this heightened awareness that bodies are changing and that people are noticing that bodies are changing. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, it's all social media stuff. And that may be part of it, but really it's the social environment. Is it a safe environment or not? And my guess is that girls feel less safe. Another, another thing that's a, a reality from research is when we look at sociometric research, we know that girls worry about popularity more than boys. Girls are much more relational. They're more relationally aggressive. Uh, so I, I would be leaning in that direction and suggesting that the – oh, and sorry, there's also additional pressure on girls. Like we've got this saying about boys that I, I, I hope one day we'll eradicate, but we haven't done it yet, and that is that when boys are having a hard time, when they're playing up, when they're being bullfeds, when they're punching each other or kicking a ball over the fence or on the roof, we shrug our shoulders and say, oh, boys will be boys. But when girls do that, we kind of say, oh, excuse me, girls, you can do better than that. Like we have a higher behavioural expectation, a higher behavioural standard for girls. So I think they're the four big things, Therese, that, that really stand out to me immediately. First off, uh, girls are more relational. Secondly, they're more aware of their bodies and the changes that are happening. And thirdly, as an extension of that, they're mindful that other people are noticing them and making judgments, both boys and girls. So they're not feeling as safe. And of course, that last thing, uh, girls are expected to behave better. That's kind of what I would imagine is possibly going on there, but it could be something else as well. I'd, I'd look forward to seeing some more research. Uh, in just mm -hmm. a sec, after the break, Therese, I want to ask you whether having siblings who have made the move into high school will sort of have much of a, an impact on that and, and maybe just unpack a bit more about the specific concerns of these kids. Imagine a relationship where you felt seen, heard and valued. One where as your partner enters the front door, they see you and their eyes light up. A relationship like that is a gift. If you don't have it now, you can. The Happy Families webinar, Better Together, gives you the insight, tools, and support you need to have a happier relationship. Available now at the Happy Families web shop. It's the Happy Families podcast, the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. If you've got kids that are going to transition to high school soon, this is the conversation that you want to be having. Therese Hooper is in charge of education at Life Education, the Director of Education in New South Wales, Life Education. We're talking about this transition to high school. And Therese, when you looked at that data, uh, did siblings, older siblings specifically, play a role about uh, whether kids were more or less concerned about getting into high school? 
Yes and no. Uh, I think at Life Ed and I think, you know, more broadly as well, we all understand and respect that all kids are different, um, really unique and special, and each each child's experience is going to be quite different. However, um, the experience that their older sibling had might help shape that experience or the, the sense of anxiety that they may have going into that. So if that, if that older sibling had a really great smooth transition, that younger kid might go into that transition feeling like that's going to be exactly the same for them. It may, it may not. Um, and obviously the flip side as well. So there might be some heightened anxiety if the, the older child ended up, um, you know, not having such a smooth sort of experience going into secondary school. School is just so stressful for so many kids. Uh, what, what were they highlighting as the thing that concerned them the most? <laughs> they had quite a list and, you know, this was qualitative research, so we've got the words out of their mouths. Um, and one of the, the my most sort of favourite um, statements or questions that they said to us was, am I going to be so busy that I'm going to, I'm not going to have time for fun anymore? Oh, wow. Um, yes. <laughs> so they were really concerned about you know, how their time was just going to be absorbed. They were really scared about the level of schoolwork they were going to be expected to do and the amount of homework. Um, they also told us that they were a bit worried about how they're going to get to this new school. You know, they might be having to navigate public transport for the first time ever. Um, a lot of them even said they'd never seen a school timetable before. Uh, and some of them went and did a, a walk around at a school orientation day and they felt like this was such a new, big, scary environment. They even got lost on the campus. So some of those real simple things that we don't see that play out as, you know, so large in, in our lives, but kids see that as enormous. And don't forget that a secondary school environment specifically, it has a real hierarchy that's very, very evident there. And it's evident in terms of size as well. Those kids look big to a, a newly sort of minted secondary school student and there's real scales of that and, and cliques around there as well. So where do they belong? I remember going into grade seven, I'm this scrawny little 11 or 12 year old kid and I'm looking at the year 12s, they're growing beards for goodness sakes. I mean, they were so big. Um, do you reckon COVID's had much of an impact on the way kids are going to transition to school next year? Yeah, I do. And teachers are telling us all the time that, you know, that kids are... Um, they, they, they haven't got the social skills that they may have had or they may have seen in place a few years ago. This is this is a flexed muscle. This is um, a muscle that you can learn and develop. Um, you know, even entering a new play environment, asking someone, you know, for some support. Um, if you don't practice those things, and we haven't because we've had so many interruptions in the last couple of years, they're less, less likely to be able to do that at school as well. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's get some answers here, Therese. If parents can help kids to prepare for that transition to secondary school, whether it's going to be this year or next year or whenever it might be, uh, what what advice would you give to parents who are and and teachers who want to improve this transition experience as kids go from being in this little school to being in this great big high school? First of all, I say to parents and teachers. Take the time and listen. Kids kids are telling us this sort of stuff. We could hear it if we'd actually just stop and listen. This is what we did at Life Ed. We asked the question and we listened. Um, we heard from nearly 450 little people um, from, you know, the ages of 10 to 14, and they told us that these are their concerns. Um, if we know that, if we have all that information on the table, we can support them with strategies and develop the skills so that they can navigate these issues. But 101 is listen to your little people. Mm, yeah, for sure. Um, and based, based on what you were mentioning before, I'd imagine we need to give them some reassurance. You, you will still have time to have fun. You can still play your favourite games, sports, <laughs> hobbies, uh, whatever, um, and the workload. Maybe we can stop scaring them about how big the workload's going to be. That, uh, that also stood out to me. Um, we don't need to be stressing our year sevens about how hard they have to work to get into university. Is that, is that reasonable? Absolutely. Yeah, stop the scare campaign. Start talking about the the benefits of it. You know, I talk to my kids and say, you know, there have been those years where you didn't necessarily love that teacher that you had for the whole year. Well, guess what? When you go into secondary school, you're going to get a different teacher every every lesson that you walk into. The likelihood of you loving half of those teachers is probably pretty high and them really getting you. So let's talk about the positives. There's a lot of positivity in the change and the experience that they're going to be having and there's ways that we can prepare them for that, even just at home. So for instance, you know, with my, my youngest at the moment, I actually suggest to her that if we go out to coffee or lunch, hey, you can go up and pay today. Here's my card. I want you to do that. And she'll normally say, 
could you come with me? And I go, no, this is a really good opportunity for you to practice your social skills. Simple things like that, you know, teaching them how to catch a bus, tap on and tap off, navigate the state transit, you know, app that we all have available to us. Little things like let's prepare them early. That's going to take the sting out of some of those changes that might frighten them leading into school transitions. Mm. Thanks, Therese. Um, so Life Education have put together, as I mentioned before, a, a really useful resource for both teachers and parents, a life education program called Guide to Thrive. Uh, take this opportunity, give it a plug. Let's find out how this might be helpful for parents and, uh, and for educators. Okay, well, what the parents and the teachers and their their carers are going to see when they log on here is it's going to be divided into three sections. The first section is for teachers. It's some professional development so that they can understand and unpack the, the research that we've done so that they can really drill down into it and understand what those kids are telling us. Uh, the second part of it is the classroom activities, which are for teachers to facilitate uh, in class that are going to develop those skills and provide strategies for kids to work through to navigate some of the challenges that the kids highlighted to us. The third part is for parents. So we know that the holy grail of education is when you can create that perfect perfect triangle between home, school and what the child's going to experience. So then we've got, you know, the, the higher likelihood of them achieving those outcomes. Um, so again, just little little tips so that we can have those conversations at home and little suggestions that you can start to prepare your young people way before they start getting those scary stories about what's going to happen at big school. Will we see Healthy Harold? No, we won't. Oh, we no. just, Healthy Harold doesn't play a part in this. There is a bit of a time, you know, kind of that drop-off time where um, they stop believing in things like, oh, oh, I don't <laughs> want to, no spoilers here, but, you know, certain <laughs> mythical creatures. The kids are um, too big for Healthy Harold. Is that what you're saying? They're going into high school. They don't need the giraffe anymore. They don't need the giraffe anymore. It's time to, to, you know, put him down. But that being said, often when we get into high school, kids are still asking where he is. So uh, they've got that nice memory and at least they know that all this research and these uh, resources are coming from a trusted provider um, that the kids, the parents and the teachers already know and trust. A bit of nostalgia. I love it. Therese Hooper, <laughs> the Director of Education at Life Ed. thank you so much for joining me on the Happy Families podcast. Thanks for having me. And for all the information about that uh, Guide to Thrive program for parents and teachers, if your kids are moving from primary school to high school, we will link to it in the show notes so that you've got access to everything that you need. The Happy Families podcast is produced by Justin Ruan from Bridge Media. Craig Bruce is our executive producer. And for more info about making your family happier, please visit our Facebook page at uh, Dr. Justin Coulson's Happy Families or online at happyfamilies.com.au. Hey, just quickly before we go, tomorrow, the doctor's desk, we're going to be having a look at some research about breastfeeding, about smacking, and a hell yes study on screens and physical activity to round it out. Can't wait to share that with you tomorrow on the Happy Families podcast. Happy Families podcast.